Hello, hello, hello. Boy, YouTube is acting up tonight. It has been crazy, blacking out, and all that happy crap. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. So, tonight I am going to be working on finishing cutting these. I'm hoping this will be done tonight. So we can move to the next step. And I have been working. On this offline. Just to try to get the cutting part out. Because I wanted to show you. Who have never done an altar journal. The steps. So that's what I'm working on. Because like I said, the, the hardest steps, I think, is getting your pieces together. And then once you get your pieces together, then I'll show you each step by step how I actually do mine. These are actually my favorite kind to do. But they are time consuming. So I'm going to get my pages ready. I have just a few more of these to finish. Getting them where I want. And I also have folders that I made up. That when I do look for certain kind of pictures. Whether it's backgrounds or animals or whatnot, I do put them together. And folders where I can pluck from them. So I have like scenic folders, animal folders. Depending on what kind of a journal I want to make. These pages are stuck together. It's the glue. You always got that. There's pieces of glue. That's what the glue looks like. So my advice to start is to, I have a bunch of coffee dyed paper, or you can use regular scrapbooking paper, whatever you like to write on, could be even just regular paper, period. Have a pile of that, that page did not want to rip. And have um, a book picked out. More glue. This glue is crazy. But this is the process of starting the type of journal that I like. And oh, by the way, I am going to talk politics tonight for anybody who enters because it's absolutely ridiculous what has been going on. I am not a drama channel and I am not a bashing channel, but it doesn't matter who you voted for. I don't care. Because I like my friends for who they are. It has nothing to do with politics or anything like that. But when you get your text taken away from you in a stream. Because you announce who you vote. That's not a friend that does something like that. Because I have my own feelings on this whole election. I am not afraid to talk about it. Whatsoever. But it's sad when you mod for somebody that you believe in and they block you for your beliefs. Is that like not something? Because that's what happened to me this week. 
And I'm not happy with that person because I have tried to address it in private and they won't even talk to me. So when you, you know, I respect my mods as mods should be respected because you choose, you pick and choose who you want to mod for your channel. And uh, even though it looks like I have a lot of mods that come in here, because I do, but they are people that I have gotten to know. They have shopped with me. They have talked with me. So that's why I picked them. And I would not block you just because you vote for somebody I don't approve of. I think that's awful. And that's why I always say this isn't United States divided states. When I see the states united and people actually letting each other have free speech of what they believe in, then I believe we're reunited. We're united. But there is so much bashing going on right now, even on Twitter. It's ridiculous. Social media, I'm sorry, it has its great value as far as connecting us with people. We probably would never dream of meeting if, without it, but it also has its devalue because it is terrible on how they bash people. I even said this in the makeup community. You know, when you're buying makeup, you didn't know who owned the companies. You know, back in the day before social media, you bought makeup because you like colors or because you maybe like a perfume smell or something like that. It is like awful. Social media is terrible because it's like now they even got makeup companies owner, owner under scrutiny. And if somebody doesn't like what they say, then it's, oh God, don't buy makeup from that company. And it's like, it's absolutely ridiculous. The evil that has come with the web. Because, you know, people can walk around and, and you, you would never know who they voted for unless you asked them. And I could have kept my mouth shut. I could have not said anything. But you know what? <laughs> I'm a truth seeker and I'm a blunt person and I'm going to tell people if they ask. I'm not embarrassed on who I voted for. But it is it does make you angry when people block you for your opinion. It's ridiculous. I didn't cuss nobody. I just stated what I feel. And I got blocked. My text was blocked. And until I get an apology from the person that did it or get talked to for the channel owner, I'm not going back because it's ridiculous. Last I checked, I was a U.S. citizen. I had a right to free speech. And I think it was rude because I wouldn't. It'd be different if a person carries on and on and on and on and on about something or, you know, how they talk about politics. But I have my beliefs. And I spoke up because I don't bite my tongue, especially when on that same particular channel, People have been bashing the person I voted for. So I told them I voted for that person. And I told them why. <laughs> so. Take it or leave it. You know. So if anybody wants to talk politics. You're more than welcome. As long as you're not putting down people. On who they vote for. I don't care. I won't have a feud in here. But that's one of the things that I do love about Ty's stream is that she'll bring up issues. Like she talks about racial issues and she talks about this kind of stuff. And they do it in a calm way where people can actually say how they feel and not get ridiculed or blocked for it. So that's one of the things I love about her channel. So anyways, I got that vented out because <laughs> I'm going to say how I feel regardless. I think that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't want to be YouTube paid too because I don't want to be censored. I want to be able to say how I feel when I feel it. It's the way people should be. Instead of hearing me rip paper, you're going to hear me cutting paper now for a little bit.
but it depends on one thing nice about journals is you can pick anything you can do farm you can do you can do anything and then you just go out and you look for the pieces that you want to go in it when I think of National Geographic, there's different kinds of journals that I can make out of this because it has a lot of variety, especially if you have different years. So I did a three-part journaling series where I did animals and waterfalls, backgrounds, and just stuff like that and i think i did excuse me and i did an under the sea one so i think this time we shall see i haven't decided on what exactly i want to do i'll go through the magazines and see what captures my attention before i pick an actual um flow because these magazines have a lot to offer. You could do a map bag alter journal because it's got a lot of mappage in it. You could, um, depending on what years you have, I think another cool idea would be to cut out pictures of things that we don't see anymore. Like, I think I had some from the 70s. And I think... Um, like stuff like rotary phones or Polaroid cameras, like stuff that's not common anymore. You could even do a time capsule type of journal where you could pick out things like that and put them in. I don't know if that's why people are looking for the cigarette ones or not. Because I know that people were doing some with tobacco in them. Some of this because they don't have those advertisements anymore. Look how pretty that is. Look how beautiful this is. It's just got birds. It's so pretty. That's a pretty background. And I like stuff like this when I do an animal journal. The whack, walk, walk, walk through nature. <laughs> waka, waka. So I'm going to cut up one of these magazines. Right now I'm just cutting off the edges where I tore them because I don't want staple holes in my pictures that I decide to pick. I want like a smooth picture for my journals. So I'll do one journal and then we'll just move to the next step because I can always cut these later. Or one magazine, I mean. Because I did pick a book out finally that I want to do it in. Sometimes I'll go through when I sell my books and I post them for a month. If there's one left over that I'm not going to push on and it's the right size, I'll turn it into a journal. Didn't seem like anybody was interested in that particular book. So that's the book I picked. The under the sea one was fun because I had pictures of sharks and dolphins and whales and all kinds of good stuff. Like I'm coming across sea creatures right now again. See how it's got the fish. And that one. And then there's a. I don't know what that is. Kind of looks like a tadpole in a way, but I don't know. It doesn't say. Oh, that's a 10-week-old salmon is what that is in that picture. So that's kind of cute for sea pictures.
I've been so tired today. I don't know if it's because it's rainy. We had a little rain shower today. Nothing major, but I don't know. It seems like rainy weather always makes me sleepy. And then all these pieces of paper I will recycle. Any scraps that I don't use paper-wise goes into recycling. As long as it's not a landfill, I'm okay. like taking the staples out of these better than ripping them because you get a smoother page because I don't want ripped pages in this journal. Even though ripped pages can be fun when you're making pockets. I like when people use magazines. It's cool. Well, how are you doing, Serendipity? Are you doing anything in fun and crafty tonight? Right now, I'm cutting one magazine up. And then I'm going to start into an altered journal. But this is the part I think is the longest. <laughs> it's getting all the pieces that you're wanting ready. I had a bunch of uh, National Geographic's donated actually to my store because they didn't want them. So I'm using those. I tried to sell them a few times, but nobody wanted them. So I'm cutting them up. <laughs> That's what I do. I try to sell first and then use them. Yes, I hear you. I hear people have been having some issues with YouTube tonight, though. But, uh, they've been seeing black screens and stuff. I'm gonna get my handy dandy garbage bag over here. And then I dump this into a bigger bag for when I recycle. It's been blipping in and out for some reason. I was watching Stacy's sale, which I'll go back after my live or finish watching it tomorrow. Because I try to be on a scheduled live every Wednesday night. This is like this even in the digital world. <laughs> If you're trying to make something digitally and not like buying digitals, but um, just if you're collecting pieces for something that I found it the longest to do that too. Even in the digital world is getting the pieces that you're looking for and then bringing everything together. having weird dreams like I was sitting <laughs> I've got so, such deep dreams here lately it's just been strange I had a dream about one of my cousins last night we, I can't, we were sitting on some kind of bench <laughs> it was like in a window but it was up in the air it was just so weird and I was seeing people walk past it we were just sitting there talking and People I have not seen since high school were like walking past us, and it was so bizarre. 
I jumped out of my sleep and my dog. She's right beside me like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> weird, weird dreams. I think that's why I've accepted the people in our lives for a reason in this season is because have you ever went back like into your past and, and you found someone that you were like best friends with and like you were totally inseparable as a kid like you spent so much time together and they're like a complete stranger to you now is that like not weird when that happens It's like, just like, sometimes I think that's what gives you that, that weird pit in your stomach when your husband or ex-boyfriend, you know, your boyfriend goes to break up with you. I think that's when, what causes that feeling in your pit is like, how can you be so close to someone? And then the next day there's nothing. I hate that feeling. I know it's just, it's really weird. I think about crazy stuff like that all the time. It's like, I don't understand. <laughs> My thought processes are all over the place. Am I getting that now? And see, I don't see a buffering on my side. That's so weird. It's not doing anything over here. Hmm. We'll just ride it out. Can you still hear me? Sometimes you don't know if it's YouTube or if it's StreamYard trying to make adjustments. You know? Is it still buffering? Bizarre. It's not even buffering on my phone. Hello. Give me one second. I'll be right back. If you can hear me. I'll leave it play and hopefully it'll work itself out. But I gotta go pee real quick. Give me a minute.
gotta love how people answer y'all. I know there's people hanging out, but uh, just ask questions and you get no answers. Is it buffering or is it stable? Be nice to have an answer. Hello. Get so tired of asking people the same question four times and nobody answers. Very frustrating. Gotta love lurkers. <sighs> so anyways, not sure if I'm buffering or if I'm here. But it looks good on my side. So I'm going to continue to finish what I started. I wish YouTube was like chat. You could see who enters your stream and who your lurkers are. It'd be nice. Lots of cute birds in these magazines. Oh, that's a pretty wolf picture. A lot of beautiful animals for sure. I'm going to hit refresh and see what happens. Yeah, I'm in live chat. It's fine here. There's a neat camera. Minota. I will finish these up later. This is all I have left. So, the book I picked is this one. Nobody bought it, so I'm going to use it. And I want to see what the measurements on this is because I do have a specific size I like doing. This is six and five eighths. Yep. By nine and five eighths. So six by nine is usually the books I like to do when altering. So. When you open a book up, it doesn't have page numbers on the first set of pages. Sometimes a book will start and you turn a few pages and then one comes up. This actually starts with 
Roman numerals. And you get all these pages before you see page number one, which is technically this page, because that's page number two. So what I do is I go through and I count all the pages from front to back that's in here. This book actually, even though it says in the back, it has 378 pages, it actually has 394 because there's 14 pages it doesn't count. So when I do an altered journal, I don't want this many pages. So I kind of like guesstimate, or you can do the math, it's up to you, how many pages that I want to remove from this book to give me the pages I want. So I don't mind about... 100 pages in a book is where I like to stand. So that leaves me with 294 pages, but that's not counting front and back. That's just counting each page. Or no, it was 50, and I wanted 100. That's how it was. So that left me, if I took 394, that left me minus 100, 294 pages. But that was not counting front and back, so I stuck two, and I divided it into the 294, and they gave me 147 pages. So that means I want to try to remove close to 147 pages out of this book. <clears throat> it's all about the math, people. <laughs> so what I'm going to do with this book is I'm going to count. I'm going to leave the two front end on this one. Because sometimes when you go to rip pages out of a book, it doesn't come out exactly the way you plan. And this here can be very destructive when you take like the pages, the first two pages out because they're really stuck in there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to count five. One, two, three, four, five, even after that. And then I'm going to rip out ten. You don't mind paper rippage, you're about to hear it. Get some sort of quick so my fingers don't dry out. Then I'm going to take, I'm going to leave that all there for now. I'm going to count five more. And I'm going to rip out ten more. As carefully as possible. And I'm going to keep going. I'll rip some of this out a little bit better. 
just a tad bit because we will come back to these. Okay, I'm going to count five more. And rip out ten more. Hey, Millie. What are you up to, lady? You want to come up? It's up to you. I can put the link down for you. I'm just tearing up a book right now. I'm doing an altered journal. If you feel like it, let me know. Yeah, we have a little bit of... We had a little bit of spring rain here today. So I count five more, you get the idea. One, two, three, four, five, and rip out ten again. And the one thing about some of the books, like there was one book I used. It was funny because I didn't know it had cute pictures in it <laughs> and a section of it. So then I had to refigure out my page layout because I wanted to leave some of the pages in the book because I wanted those pages to stay to use as part of my journal and incorporate it. So it turned out a little trickier to tear out the pages on that one. That's why I always look through my books before I tear out the pages to see if there's any I want to save or not. And then I work around it. Yeah, YouTube's been having issues. Mike Miss is playing fish dome. He doesn't have no time right now with the shift he's on. He goes, I feel guilty not being able to help people. And I said, Millie understands. He's working a lot of hours right now. I don't know how long it's going to last because he doesn't usually, excuse me. He doesn't usually work like this. They get six people out with the CV. So, in another part of his mail right now, and uh, he leaves here at 2.30 in the afternoon mail. He don't get home until 6 a.m. That's, that's how long his shifts are. So, I told him if he gets too tired, he's got a guy he works with up there. I said, stay up there. Don't come home and be driving that long drive home if you're that exhausted because I don't want him to end up in a wreck because that happened to him before. He fell asleep while driving and ended up in a guard rust. Because you got to realize there's other people out on the road. I mean, thank goodness he didn't reckon to someone else. But he, he said he was awake one minute, out he went. And that's when he had his vitamin D level checked. And he was low on it. So he started taking it and he was better. But he just worries me because he's no young pup anymore. Two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. He, he's exhausted like he literally come home the other night was falling asleep in his food it, it's awful it's awful but, it, but it, the guy that he works with he lives real close and he's got a house he just moved to you know he's a younger guy but i said if you need a place to stay ask him take some of your blankets with you and your pillow or whatever He scares me when he drives home when he's that tired.
keep telling him he needs a camper. <laughs> He was so funny. He says, well, I need a place to shower. I said, Michael, campers have showers, goofball. I said, get a camper with a shower because he could stay right in the parking garage if he needed to. I said, do what you got to do. That's a long hour. I couldn't do it. I'd be pulling over on the side of the road and passing out. That's a long drive. But anyways, it is what it is, you know. And then I go out and I have a puddle under my car. And my power, I'm so upset because this happened a while ago. And it was my power steering. And it was so terrible because I could barely move me. My arms were killing me trying to drive this car. So we took it in the shop and what did they do? They freaking put a junk part on it instead of putting a brand new part. So it it didn't last. And now I'm back to a puddle in my on my in my driveway again. I'm like freaking really because my husband even told him he would order the part. I mean, he knows the people and it is a junkyard, but that's beside the point when a customer wants a new part, you should be ordering that new part cuz the new part was like a, I think it was like almost 200 I don't know because we looked it up once and they put junk on it and I'm like so furious because I can't drive nowhere right now I have to keep putting power steering in my car every time it like fluid every time I go somewhere because you can't move the steering wheel so it's just one thing after another we just had a faucet leak. Everything always happens before Christmas. We just had a major faucet leak. So we had to replace that. Because we lived here for eight years. I don't know how long the faucet was in here. Because it wasn't really old. But we had a leak. We replaced it. It cost a hundred and some dollars just to buy a new faucet. So we got that done. Because the receipt's upstairs. Now this is going to be another couple to 200. To, it was, I can't remember if it was like 196 for the part. I don't know. By the time it gets here, it'll probably be 200. And it sucks. Because I literally sat in a live sale tonight. I can't buy anything. You know how awful that is? It's like torture. It's like holding candy in front of a kid and saying they can't have it. <laughs> That's how I feel when I can't buy my crafting stuff. So... <sighs> makes me so mad so I gotta wait till we get the parts and then I'll be able to spend again later <laughs> but right now it's gonna be a big no-no Seven, eight, nine. Ten. Yeah, it is awful, especially when there was some cute stuff. Stacy was selling some cute stuff in her live sale tonight. She had cute napkins for Christmas. She had a uh, candy cane ones, and they were so cute. And I'm like, <laughs> what to buy? What to buy? And I can't. Because I've got to have a vehicle. i got a load of books now that need past due of going out. And I haven't got them out yet. So you see how much, when you look at this and this, how much this is thin this book out. This is why you do this to an altered book. Because you want plenty of room to put stuff back in it. So you count five again. Three, four, five, and you rip out ten more.
Yep, it's always something. You working on anything special right now, Mel? Count five, rip out ten. This is another reason why I don't edit, so people can see actually how long this stuff takes to do. Because <laughs> you don't know the excruciatingly long when it's edited. They make it look so easy. And it is work for sure. Jeez. Four, five, rip out ten. Be like, what did you do Wednesday night? I sat and watched somebody rip pages out of a book. <laughs> I got my orange mango. I love this body armor. It tastes so good. Oh, it's my favorite drink. It's delicious. One, two, three, four, five. Rip out ten. Hey, Safrina. You didn't see these last night, um, Millie. During my live sale, I showed the dangles that Safrina made me. She's in the UK, and look how pretty these are. She was one of the people I went down the Etsy, and I saw her dangles. So she custom made these two for me. I love these. I'm going to show these off like crazy because I love them. She did this one with a butterfly. Let me look on StreamYard. I don't know why YouTube does that there. So I'm in frame. And then it says Dream a Little Dream. I love that song. Dream a little dream of me. And then here's a little blue heart. She killed it. She put all my favorite things in here. She did. And I'm sure I'll still find more stuff. So there's that. And then here's the other. Oh my goodness, I just noticed this one. There's the letter T for Tammy on that little block. And then she got my kitty cat Hope. And then here's the horse. Little horse charm. Isn't that cute? This is so adorable. I love it. Oops, this charm fell off. Hold on. I gotta fix it. It's a little horsey one fell off. Mm 
Should have been good. I haven't been pulling on it. I'll have to add it later because I have the tools upstairs. Isn't that cute? These are so, this is spectacular. And it's got the horse in it. Love it. And she even put it in a little blue bag. I didn't take them back upstairs yet so I could show them off. I don't. I've never played with that kind of stuff. The one that I made, I made this one. <laughs> I think this is different because I like it. <laughs> I've done them with material and laces. But I wanted one with a chain but had that, um, what's that called? Oh, the name just went out of my mind. The fuzzy stuff. So I got these cra these from BB Crafts, and I did this because I wanted it to look. I had a key chain a charm. I had a cross. I had a heart. And then there's a Pegasus and a butterfly. And then these were glass beads from BB Crafts. And so is the chain and the clasp. And I uh, added it to this. I like it. It's laid and it's pettable. <laughs> so I did this one. And I have one that I did. But I sold the journal that it's on. With the lace and material. But I've never played with beads. Like not those type of beads. So I tore five out. <laughs> Oh, I'll never get sick of those. I love them. They're so pretty and they're so different. <laughs> they're so cute. I love my dangles. Let me count five more. One, two, three, four, five. And then we tear out ten more pages. I'm almost to the end of tearing. Four. I just wish I could find the first one. The one that got lost. Makes me sick. It, it was another butterfly one. I have the picture of it on my phone. The first one that she made. But it got lost. It still makes me sick. It either got lost or got thrown out somehow. I don't know. I looked everywhere. My one grandson says, Nana, if you stop looking, you'll find it. Well, I haven't found it yet. Oh, I love that journal. I haven't showed that one yet. At the end of the year, I mean, I showed it, I think, when I unboxed it. But at the end of the year, all the journals I use, I show. But I haven't, I haven't even started in that one yet. 
I showed all last year's and then because I, I have a bunch of journals right now to go through. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, your ten left. No. So now, this is how much it weeded out compared to this. And then I'll use these pages for something else. Alrighty. Alrighty, Mel. Thanks for coming in. That would be nice. That, that was really nice. I like the denim. So, these two pages of the front and back. I don't, it doesn't matter if those are counted or not. Let's see how many pages I have. Okay, I've counted 51 already. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through. This is why I leave this. And I'm going to rip out one more. So instead of 10, we're going to take out 11 pages. Usually, I mean, I'm usually tired the night after a, a live sale and I take a break, but I like having my Wednesday study so people know I'll be here if they want to have some somebody just to keep them company to craft with. Works for me. But I definitely want to re-rip the pages where I've already ripped. I don't want to go in between the non-ones. And I like that five page leeway in between each set of pages in case you need to do exactly what I'm doing. Hmm. 
take these ones out. There's five. Because I'm not going to use these. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, six. There was seven in the end, and it still leaves me the last two that I wanted to keep. Okay, that works. And then this is what it looks like from this end so that you can see where all the pages are gone, then you can go back and you can do a cleanup. So, what I mean by that is I go back and sometimes I'll tear just some of these excess little pieces out just to make it look a little cleaner. I love making altered books, though. These are fun. That looks pretty good. As long as there's not like humongous pieces sticking up that I can't get a hold of. And I want to rip them all the way to the core. Just kind of clean it up. Have you ever done an altered journal before? These are great for glue books to where you want to add extra pages if you want to. These are fun. Have you lived in the UK all your life, Safrina? So there's that. And see how these are like bigger pieces? I tear these out. Aww. What's your favorite? The signatures? I've done altered signatures, binders. Right now I'm working on one that's going to have a hidden signature. It'll be my first. But it's going to take that one a while. So this one I'm working on now has been very challenging. <laughs> to say the least. And it's definitely going to be a wide spine. I wanted it purposely to be that way though. I just can't wait to see how it's going to turn out. I'm kind of combining my digital world where I used to do digitals to like a scrapbooking world. <laughs> it's a combination of like everything I love it and doing this kind of stuff. So it's going to be interesting how it turns out. It's going to either be great or it's going to bomb <laughs> one or the other. 
The only part that I'm really worried about it right now, like my husband, he doesn't like the spine. He thinks the spine is too wide. But I wanted it that way. And I told him, I said, it just, I don't know how it's going to hold, though. That's my main concern about that part. But I wanted it to be really wide. It's wide enough that it fits from my thumb to my finger. I mean, it, it's got a really wide spine on it. But it's going to have a lot of signatures in it, too. So, I'm pretty excited. So that looks clean enough. Go to the next one. Still tearing some papers. I have a tool upstairs that's, I don't know where I put it though. One where you can kind of slide down through here and pick up some of this excess stuff, but it will is what it is. It's a cutting tool. One thing I hate about when you start getting arthritis in your hands, it's like trying to crochet and you know having your hands squeezed together. My hands start to hurt like right through my palm. Old age is awful when you're trying to craft and do stuff like this. <laughs> That's funny. I think this one is like five inches across. I have, I had made an alligator mouth one when I did a, it was so huge. And I did sell it. It was, a, it was an altered one, but it was a lot of fun. And I don't mind if they stay open. You know, sometimes I like the handhold flat ones. And sometimes I like the wide ones. To me, I like all of them. As long as I get the right look. But this one's going to be interesting to see how it turns out. I'm worried. My my main concern is the weight of the... Because I've never done Hidden Spines before. So it, as a signature book, this would be fine. But being that it's going to be a hidden signature, I worry about the weight of the signatures to hold together. If you know what I mean. I mean, it's not too late to turn it into signatures if I wanted to. But I really want to do a hidden signature. But I guess, I don't know. I mean, I could make this in a signature one and do a, a hidden one later. But we'll see. I was told to use Fabri-Tac glue so that it will stay in place. So hopefully Fabri-Tac will not let me down. <laughs> Definitely will be the test of the glue. So far, I'm liking the way it's turning out. I get to working on it. And you know how it is. Time flies. And I'll, I'll, get, to, I'll get started and I won't put it down for hours. Like I just do all this cut, different kind of stuff with it. And then I haven't touched it now for like a week. <laughs> but when I get rolling on it, ideas start rolling out. So the, I, I kind of don't get how people can make journals really fast. Unless they're taking shortcuts and they're doing something easy. Because I find that when you make a journal, it takes time. I can't, I can't just throw one together. Any journal that I've ever made has taken me time. But 
but this one's not going to be for sale because I think some of the pictures in it are copyrighted and I don't want to, I don't want to take that risk. It's just to see it's a test to see how good I can pull it off. I'm, I'm challenging myself on a couple of projects right now. But, um, because I don't, I think they might be copyrighted because I pulled them off of a, a website and they're not from, definitely not from the 18, early 1900s. So I'm sure they would be. Sometimes when you find images online, you can type in copyright free. You can still get copyrighted ones. And they'll have those little swirls and stuff in them where you can tell they belong to someone. But then there's some out there that don't. And you can't really tell. Me personally, I feel like if a person doesn't want you to use your stuff, then you shouldn't be putting pictures out there unless you have something over them. Or your signature somewhere. You know what I mean? Because I noticed like long time ago we used to use art pictures to play games with on MSN. They allowed us though because we asked permission. But they would hide like within the picture itself. They would hide like uh, initials or something. So you couldn't get away with that. But it's like there is a lot of pictures out there that have nothing on them though, you know. So sometimes it's hard to tell unless you have... You buy, you know, books from that time or you find a few websites online that'll tell you the ones that are copyright free. Because there are a few you can pick from. I mean, I think that there are some that pick certain styles, like they'll use envelope journals or they have ones that, that are made out of file folders. I probably could pu pull a few of them off at once, but I mean like a real hardback journal. You know what I mean? That's, I don't, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I think I need time because I have different... <laughs> Different ideas at different times. There was one that took me five months. It was crazy. I would put it down and I thought, okay, I'm done. <laughs> and then I would think of something else. I'd pick it back up and work in it again. But it, but the longest it's ever taken me to do a journal has been five months. This one here probably take me a little longer because it's not custom made for nobody. It, it's not nothing that I'm going to be selling. So I'll probably take longer on it because I can. I don't have to feel like a pressure of a deadline. I just can't wait to see how it's going to turn out. So far, it's coming together pretty interesting. <laughs> pretty, pretty interestingly. And I'm stepping out of the box a little bit, too. This is not a journal I would particularly would pick. <laughs> But I wanted to challenge myself with some stuff. So it's exciting. I think that's why I have a hard time too. Like I'm in a lot of Facebook groups. And sometimes they have challenges they want people to do. I can't. Like I don't like the pressure of... Um, feeling that I have to do something like before a holiday or something. I like taking my time to do stuff. Unless I'm custom making for someone else, then that's a different story. If I'm doing something for someone else, then I take my time, but I do try to get it out. I don't, I don't like making a person wait. 
like a super, super long time when I'm creating something for someone else. I'll work on it until that particular thing's finished. Or when I'm doing it for myself versus I can have three projects running at the same time for myself and it's no big deal the time. But if I'm working on something for someone else, then I stick with that particular project until it's done. Before I start something else. It's funny how every crafter is different and how they work on things, you know. I like listening to people. Just like when I write... I love doing brainstorming, but I always do the end before I do the beginning. <laughs> I like, I like, sometimes I'll do a thesis statement in the first paragraph and then the end, but I never do the, I always do the body, like the whole middle of a story when I'm writing. I do it last. <laughs> That's funny. See, that's like me when I'm buying supplies. Like this was really challenging on this journal that I'm working on because the supplies I have isn't what this journal is about. <laughs> so I had to really go off and look for things and stuff to go with it because like I have a whole bunch of stuff. Like I'll see something and an idea will hit me. But, it, but then when I go to work on something, you know, isolated I realize I don't have like enough of a color or because <laughs> you get like 50 million ideas running through your head when you're like shopping for stuff. And then two, they retire the paper line so fast you're afraid to, oh, if I don't get it right now, I'll never see it again. I don't like that about paper lines. I wish they would keep them out a little longer instead of making you feel the pressure that you have to buy it now. And there's some people, they like only doing vintage. I can't, I have not made a vintage journal yet. Um, that's another challenge I'll have for myself because I like color. So like all the journals I've done so far, they've had color. You know, instead of just like a coffee look or, or ledger papers or anything that looks like vintage. I don't have a journal like that because I never made one like that. I mean, I have one that I bought off someone else. It's not something I've done myself. So that, that'll be an interesting challenge, too. Because I do like vintage papers and stuff. It's just different. I think we just are triply critical on ourselves as creators anyways because i know i used to be like that when i started in the digital world world too i seem like i like everybody else's stuff better than my own i think it's just the thing we all go through i kept my very first journal that i made this past year most of the time i didn't want to keep them but there was one that just resonated with me so much I decided to keep it. Look how nice that is at an angle. So I get all that room to have fun in this again. And then, of course, this will be covered when I'm done. So there's the beginning. If a person does an altar journal, that's how you start. You get your book. You get your pages. You get your size. I really love the size of this. And this is all the papers that came out of it. To make it skinnier. But I like working. My Personally for myself. I like working with pages of. Around the 100 area. I try not to go too much higher. I mean a little bit's not too bad. But I just don't want like a 400 page book. I like mine between. I would say the lowest. Would be 50 pages. I wouldn't go under that. And the highest. I wouldn't go past, I would say, 120. So, 
We'll see how many pages we have in this one. Counting the outer ones. I, I took all that out and ended up with 58 pages, but you got to take into consideration. That's 58 pages. But then when you add 58 more, because you will have the front and back to work with, that's how many actual pages you have. And that's if you decide to do something, you know, with the front and back pages. So I'm just under where I wanted to be at 116. I don't want to go to like 120 and up. So 116 is what I will have to work with. But most times I don't mess with these, this page here, unless I put something on it, like I won't rip these out because I feel like they hold the book together better. The first two and the last two. Because I like, I like to keep these this as solid as possible because you don't want your book to fall apart. And I think this has got a pretty good spine. Yes, it is. And then now the whole thing is, is how you want your book to look page wise and I'm actually out of my glue <laughs> I'm out of my um Fabri-Tac which stinks but I've used Alina's tacky glue on these type of books too so now what I do with this book if you guys are ready for the next step Is I look at these pages here where the, the book's ripped and decide what do I want to do with them. Do I want to turn this into a side pocket? Do I want it to turn it into a down pocket? This way, this way, or do I want to fold it back? So being that it's the beginning of the book, I might just jump right in. And what I'll do is I always line these up to go with the words as best possible. Now, there's another crafter on here that will tell you to get from the back to the front whenever you're doing this so that your pages don't lump. I've done it both ways and I've had lumpy pages regardless. So what I try to do, because you want this to lay as flat as po possible and you try not to get your bubbles in there. So I see how this looks because when you go to move this to the other side, the pages change. Like you'll see this one stick out a little more. So what I do is I go here to when it's turned. This is just my thought process. And what I'll do is I want this part to be left open. This is going to be my tuck. So I turn this over, put this page against it, and I take my glue. And get it cleaned off first. And I will take this and I will go down the inside of this page. I think it's clogged. Hold on. Oh, there it goes. 
I had some dry glue. So I go down here and try to make it as light as possible. Even if you got to take your finger across it, it might help because I don't want anything bunching. And the one thing about any other glue you use, whether it's Elmer's or Alina's, it's water-based where your tacky glue, Fabri-Tac isn't. And you get no bumps with Fabri-Tac. So I took the glue crossways and up. And I'm going to just let this sit here and dry a little bit. And you'll see what I mean. But the reason why I like the 6 by 9 books personally is I find the pages stay flatter. See how that's got a, a bunch in it right there? It's going to do it again. Let's see if I can do this. Because I don't want it to bunch. That's the whole point. I, think it was, I can't remember if it was this way or this way I did this. It's going to have a little bunch in it, but it is what it is. And what that happens sometimes with these type of books. But this one here is flatter, being that it's um, a wider book. You will have, as you will find out, as you go with smaller books, it's how the pages turn and you get these lumps that it does something to the pages where it pulls them and lumps them up. And there's no way to totally thin it down without having a little bit of glue issue. And then I take the flap here and I go down here. And then this will hold. But I think I honestly think when a person's starting out, if you don't if you don't feel comfortable doing signatures, I think these ones are funner to play with first. If you, you know, till you get yourself familiar with the needle and thread and all that. But I seen another crafter, she does this from back to front when I'm doing from front to back. I don't know. It could be a left hand thing. Because I don't. I don't like starting from the back. I feel like it gets bumpier. So then we'll go to the next one. And I go to the next signature. And then this one here I want to do different. So I want to do a side pocket. So I'm going to take my glue just on the top part over here of the book. And then I'm going to go to the bottom and do the same thing here. And I'm going to leave that left alone because this is going to be a side pocket. And this is another reason why when you tear your pages, you got to pay attention to where you tear them because you want those hidden. That's exactly what I'm doing is hiding all the pages I just torn out the little pieces coming up through. So now when you turn the page, you're going to have just a regular book. That's going to be a little bumpy, but it is what it is. I don't care if it's crinkly. This stuff's going to be covered up later anyways. And then I go back through right where I just was. And then this here is going to be a side tuck. So you can store stuff in there. I think I made journaling cards you can actually tuck in there. And as I'm making the book, usually, which I don't know where they're at right this second. Oh, wait a minute. I have some in this. I get paper clips. If I can get this open. There we go. I get paper clips and I will clip the ones to the side and the top because these are hard to find unless you hold the page up. So I stick a paper clip right here to let me know that's a pocket. That way they're easier to find. These ones here are obviously because the paper's folded down. And then I skip again and I go to the next set. 
which this is going to do it again. Where's the next set of pages right here? And then I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to take this page here, fold this one back this way. And I'm going to glue here, down the side here, and across the bottom. I don't know. I don't know what I was doing, I guess, because I wasn't thinking about it. But one book I did like this, I never had any bumps. <laughs> Maybe because I wasn't thinking about it. And then here, I will go down the page, <laughs> across where this is going to lay, or it's probably easier to do the actual fold itself, and then do this this way. And you're going to have a lot of pockets because of where you ripped all the pages out. I enjoy these, though. I really do. Then you go through here. And now I'm going to do one that you come down and you slide down into. So I'm going to take <laughs> my glue down the page here. And then over this way. And then push this down. And then I'm going to get another clip and clip it here to show. And this is where the tuck is, or the pocket is. I like taking, I think what I did last time, see how that bunched up like that? I think what I did was I just, I smoothed it this way and then I smoothed it the other way. And it, it didn't get as bad. See how that's got a little crinkle right there? That's what happens when you do it this way. But all of it's going to be covered because I'm going to use pictures to cover it. But there's another um, YouTuber, Craft Arena, that did this. And she makes it look so easy, like there was no bunching. But I have never had a book that didn't have that was totally smooth. They all had a little bunching to them. But she makes it look so easy. But she covers her pages with. Uh, whenever I've watched her videos, she always used scrapbooking paper to cover her pages. I don't use scrapbooking papers to do these. I use coffee dyed and I use the pictures out of the National Geographic. And the one that I have that turned out, it'll be shown at the end of the year because I did use it. It's one of my own that I finally liked <laughs> enough to keep because it was more me. So I kept that one and I've already used it and it looked really nice. I was really impressed when I started writing in it, how nice everything blended together because I, I surprised myself because <laughs> I didn't think the coffee paper would be good with, you know, colored pages, but it, it did. It turned out really nice. I was impressed. So it'll be shown at the end of the year. Well, in January, I usually do it in January because I usually finish up December 1st into the new year. And then we skip to the next set. And I think Craft Arena, she does it from front to back is how she does it. And then it, she lays hers down where I do mine backwards. I still say it's a left-hander thing. <laughs> and then this one here, um, just you can pick whatever you want as you're going through the book. So probably...
we'll do another folded one this way. Maybe I'll do it this way because that one does have a little rip at the top. I don't want it to rip more. So I'm going to do another side one this way. Yeah, we'll do it on this way. What did I just do? Did I glue it together? I did. Hold on. You know what? We're going to take this this way. And we'll let that dry. And we do that too as crafters. We make mistakes. I just glued that whole page together. <laughs> and that's okay. Because I'm going to change it to the other side instead. We'll do it like this. One thing nice about this type of glue is that you can change your mind. <laughs> I don't want that to stick together, so I'm going to have to have it wait for that to dry some. There. I kind of like that better anyways. Look how that edge is already colored on that side. I always make a mess. So we got to wait for that to dry before I can do the next ones or they'll stick together. Woo! Let's see how this is going to bend this way. See how it crinkled? Oh, well. Because you want it to be able to bend both ways. Oh, well, it's got to crinkle, but it'll be all right. But I do think these books are harder. Because at least in a signature one... Your book, your pages will stay straight. Where on these, you have that option of having a bump on this particular type, or maybe because I let the pages dry. I don't know. There's something about the one I kept it never bunched. The pages stayed flatter for some reason. I don't know what I did different. Yes, yeah, she does. She's she was really good. She was taking care of her mom and doing this kind of stuff, and it was really cool to watch to pass time. I think it's pretty dry, so we can move on. <laughs> But yeah, it was cool how she did it this way, but I found it harder to do it that way. I don't know. It just could be me. So we'll leave that one. This one will do the regular pocket way. I don't know if I can pick this up. Maybe, yeah, maybe that would be a little better. We have more of an aerial view. So this one is the one you should do. Go across the top with the glue. Don't come down this way <laughs> like I did in the last one. And this goes to show too that you don't need to edit when it comes to doing stuff like this. I, I want to see the whole process. You know, some people be like, well, I don't want to sit here and blow dry my stuff. Or well, I want to see that part. I don't even own one of those little blow dryer things. Because I like seeing the steps that are missed. Because sometimes I think it makes it look too easy to people. 
when you edit, you know, because you're taking out parts that people want to see, even your mistakes. Because I, I learned by watching people's mistakes. You know, if they make a mistake with a certain way they do something, I know not to do it when I do mine. Alrighty. Will you get some rest, lady? <laughs> you should be able, because I know it's got to be late there. Is it 2 a.m. there? You're, you're either like four or five. I forget when we fall back. You're either four or five hours ahead of me in the UK. Because it's like um, 10.48 here. Hey, Heather. But normally on our time, okay, for... We fell back an hour, so now you're ahead even more. Because usually you guys over in the UK are five hours ahead of me. But right now it looks like you're six. Or no, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. No, you're five hours. Well, you have sweet dreams, Tapina. And, well, it's good that you got to stop in. I'm just playing with an altar journal, Heather. I figured nobody's seen the process of my favorite way to do a journal because I really love this style. It's just very time consuming. Like it takes a little bit of work. But I like them. And see, I'm going to have bubbles because of the glue because I didn't smear it with my finger. But that's okay. I kind of, sometimes I don't mind the bubble look with glue. Depends on what I'm doing. So we have that one done and then we need one to their sideways. This one, we're going to bring the page back and then we're going to do another up and down one. So this one, I'm going to bend this page back and I'm going to glue this part first before I do the bottom. I like my Lena's tacky glue. I still love this glue. Even though I do use Fabri-Tac too. I never used Fabri-Tac. Sometimes I wish I didn't because now I like it. <laughs> and it evaporates too quick. And then I'm going to go down this way and across this way. And then I'm going to smush it to this page. And then I'm going to turn it while it's still wet just to see. Now, see, that one didn't bunch. Isn't that weird? That one didn't bunch up like the other one did. I don't know. It is what it is. You just do the best you can. And this one here I'm going to do from top to bottom. So we're going to go back up here. And we're going to just do down this side of the page. I'm a lefty so I might look backwards to you right handers. <laughs> and then I'm going to go across the bottom and leave the top part open. And I'm going to take this page and go down to this and then I'm going to take a paper clip so we know the pockets this way on this one and one thing that's fun about these little paper clips you can either leave them here and decorate them with something if you want to know where your pockets are or you can just put something in it that sticks out now see this one bunched so I'm going to smear it this way I like crinkling them both ways so that way when they do dry, you don't have bunched papers. I think it's very crucial to flip them side to side. 
so wherever it's going to bunch, you can smooth it out best you can while the glue is still wet. Because these ones here just got a little wrinkle in them. Not that nothing major you can't handle. It's weird how this one bunched up, but the one before it didn't. I don't know. It's just weird. Okay, so we got that one done. And then we go into the next signature. And whichever way you want to do it, you can either go into a side pocket, you can go up and down. I tend to try to mix it up. So this one, I'm going to do this way. I'm going to go across here. Just across the top and across the bottom. To have that side top pocket again. Grab this page. I'm going to get another paper clip. Sometimes when I get to decorate these, I forget where the pockets are. And I'm going to take it this way so we don't have that bunch again. And I'm going to shut the book. And as the pages have dried, see how it's starting to get puffy already? I'm going to go back there and make sure the pages lay okay. See how it's crinkled? That one's not too bad. The more you flip it through it, the more you work out all the bubbles. Make it a little flatter anyway, or it's not too bad. This one here. Page was up ahead that big right here. Sometimes I take my scissor handles, try to smooth it out just a little bit. I could leave this as a rating page. <laughs> All right, Heather. I'll try to be here for a little bit. <laughs> that's funny so we have this side and then we go to this page and I decide how I want my last few to be done because there's not a lot left to do so we have a side we have this one okay so this one's going to be one that goes backwards. So I'm going to take this. And bend it back. I'm going to take this. Across the top and just down to here. And I'm going to bend this down like so. And then I'm going to take this piece kind of line it up with the words. And then I'm going to go back this way and smash this down. And then I'm going to turn it to make sure it's smashed both ways. So this way and this way. So this 
side. It'll be up and down. And then the next one, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to do it across the top. Across the bottom. And I'm going to put these together. Make sure when I flip it this way, still together. That one kind of came out smooth too. And then I'm going to put another flip in here. And we have our pocket. And then the last two will be this one I'm going to bring down this way. I'm put my glue with it. Across the top, down this way. And then on this side, we'll go as close to the words as possible. I'm going to do that to this page. And now once this is there, I'm going to flip it over to make sure it doesn't bubble. Maybe it had something to do with going into the page more. Hmm. There's a thought. Okay. Then I have two more pages left. This one, just do one down. It'll be two back to back. Pretty good. So we'll put this here. Close to the words again. It might have something to do with why it wasn't so bubbly. Maybe. And then we'll do it again. Down this way. And this way. And then do this. So I go through one more page. Something I did. Oh, looky there. It was more into the page. How interesting is that? 
you don't want to glue it on the edge. You want to glue it into the page. And you'll get less bubbles. Look at how flashy made it so smooth. That makes sense. And then the last page, we'll do the up and down pocket. So we're going to go here on the words. And then we're going to go up and down right here. How nice is that? And that will finish the pockets. That is pretty cool. I'm gonna take in we're right on the last one. We shall put a paper clip. Let me know that's the last. Maybe not. That did bubble too. Maybe it is the bend of the book. I don't know. So now this is what we have going to put through. All these pages and then a pocket. And a page, a page, and a pocket. And a page. A pocket. A page. A page and a pocket. And we have a page, a page and a pocket, a page, a page and another pocket, page and page and a pocket, page and a page and a pocket, page, page, pocket. Page in your pocket. 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 Page. Page in your pocket on top. Nice. Fun stuff. So now. We shall set that aside and let that dry. And I'm gonna try to cut these up at some point, these rest of these books, and then we will be back next week continuing the book. So I've been on from two hours, I'm good. And I hope whatever time zone you're in, you're having a good one. And for everybody that come and visited me tonight, thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. Bye. We'll work on this project together.